Hey team, welcome to HD Designs Crochet HDDC. I'm Heather and welcome to 2024. Wow, <laughs> I feel nervous. Hey team, what's good? What's happening? Welcome back. It is a brand new year and I've got lots of good stuff to share with you. I have actually made notes, let me show you. This is my planner that I designed myself and I have actually made some notes of everything I want to talk to you about. And I've also been debating like, do I talk about this? Do I not? I don't have a set script or anything, so let's just see how much we get through in the next half hour. So how have you been? How was your Christmas? How was your new year? I hope everything's been tickety-boo with you. If you are returning, thank you so much for coming back and joining me. And if you're brand new, thank you for clicking on this video. You can expect to see lots of granny squares on this uh, channel. I would say granny squares, motherhood and crochet business owner stuff. I'm gonna go straight into the life updates because then all of my current projects and finished projects will make sense. 2023 was a lot. It was great, but it was also a lot. It's the year that I came back off maternity leave. It's the year that I started counseling for post-traumatic stress disorder, um, following on from my pregnancy and labor with my son. It's the year that my son turned one. It's the year that like so many things happened in my personal life. And then it's also the year that coming back from maternity leave, I launched my first crochet collection. And wow, there was so much going on, so many moving parts. And I look back now and I'm incredibly proud of everything I achieved. And also like, I acknowledge how much more how much more healing and how much more time I need, especially in terms of my experiences throughout pregnancy and labor and how they're still having a massive impact now and how that impact is spilling into everything, absolutely everything, every aspect of my life, including HGDC, because at the end of the day, this brand, this business is me. I ended the year with some really big feelings and I've started the year in some really, really big feelings and I f I'm finding that I'm walking like a, a line of how much do I share and how much do I want to keep to myself and do I share once I'm through it or do, do I share as I'm going and it feels so very, very messy and very, very raw and it's so difficult to know how to navigate and I have found increasingly that instead I've been retreating into myself and into my home and that's okay like I, I recognize that I need that it's just then showing up here is so much harder I, sometimes I feel when I sit down that I have to put a mask on and be like hi everything's fine and here's the crochet because if I even start to talk, even if I just say, look, things aren't okay, but I don't want to talk about it, I can still feel the emotions coming up. I have seriously, seriously, seriously considered just stopping HDDC. Whew, that feels horrible to say. <laughs> I have been really really wrestling with the idea of just closing down a shop and just not doing this anymore taking away the financial aspect removing my shop removing the patterns and just potentially showing up on social media as a hobby um i've really wrestled with the idea of changing my content i'm in like a really big transition period I guess or a big shift of some sort and maybe all of this will make sense sometime next year or in a couple of years time but right now it just feels very overwhelming and daunting and messy 
working on myself, healing myself is huge. Having a 19 month old son, huge. Taking care of my home, my husband, my son, huge. Navigating a business online with all of that, also huge. Amongst all of this, I've been sitting, thinking, agonizing, praying and just looking for guidance. And I know when it comes to saying, when I say out loud, that I was even thinking of closing HGDC, I know in my heart that that isn't the right step, which is why I'm here and I'm committed to showing up amongst all of the mess and all of the, all of life. One very big thing that I do want to dismantle this year is the superwoman image theme that has been assigned to me almost and that I am expecting myself to uphold. Quite often when I post on Instagram I will get comments like you're a super mom, you're doing amazing. One, I don't feel like I'm doing amazing. Two, there's so many things that you don't see off camera like okay yeah I put a collection out but what's the state of my house? What's the state of, you know, there's so many things you just don't see. Social media is so 2D. And sometimes that's really hard to convey. Um, and then the other thing is, I don't want other mums looking in and thinking, how is she doing all this? And I am just surviving today, day to day. Because truly, honestly, last year I spent a lot of my days just truly surviving day to day. It just so happens that crochet is a massive part of me. It's a massive part of everything I do. I owned. I make time through the day for 10 minutes of crochet here and there and that 10 minutes then becomes these projects that you see. I don't know, I don't, I don't have all of the words and I don't truly understand all of this myself because obviously I'm in the middle of it. All I know is that I want to be here, I want to continue with HGDC and I have made plans for this year and I have got goals for this year and I do feel excited about my crochet and that's where I want it to remain. I want to remain in a space of snuggle my baby and make whatever makes my heart happy, like crochet my heart happy and that's the main theme for the year. Back when I was pregnant, before I was pregnant, before I knew what was in store for me when it came to pregnancy, I had ideas of what we would do so I was going to continue working during pregnancy and then the baby was going to arrive, I was going to take a few months and then baby was going to go in nursery and I was going to be full-time work, whether that was a hybrid of um, using my qualifications, which is law, um, I am a solicitor, I have a solicitor, like the equivalent of a solicitor qualification, or whether it was HGDC or a hybrid, I was in my mind heavily leaning towards more the crochet side with maybe a few part-time or freelance hours within the um, law legal sector just for balance and yeah the motherhood kicks in and I felt so completely differently and I've gone from like equality, women can do anything, freedom for women to wanting to be a stay-at-home mother we are a one income family and I want to be that quintessential homemaker where like I'm baking bread, I'm growing our own food, my children are home educated, we spend glorious days out in the sunshine and in the winter we snuggle under blankets and we read books and like don't get me wrong I know there's going to be tough days but also like this is this is the image for our future. That is honestly such a different space to where I thought I would be. And again, like, <laughs> there's a lot going on with my identity at the moment of like, who am I? What's important to me? What are my boundaries? Yeah, honestly, it's just a lot. But as I was saying, Teddy isn't going into daycare, he's with me 24 seven. 
we will reassess this at some point later in the year but it's easier to say for the for this year 2024 teddy will be home with me um so obviously in my mind previously i was gonna have maybe eight to 20 hours a week to get hgdc work or whichever work done but i don't have that now so i've spent a lot of the first few weeks of this year really really just figuring out how I, how how am i gonna do all of these things um last year to get the collection done i did quite a few um late night crochet hours i'm definitely a night owl maybe you are too i'm definitely a night owl i spent a lot of time in the evenings crocheting um it meant that i was maybe getting four or five hours sleep a night um but honestly at the time i really wasn't sleeping very well anyway because i was having so many flashbacks and nightmares um due to pregnancy that I didn't want to sleep so in a way crochet was my excuse not to um and what worked for me last year basically isn't going to work for me this year because i've arrived into this year feeling really quite drained and worn out and my eyes are really open to the fact that i need to take proper care of myself I need to be eating proper meals, I need to be taking supplements, I need to be doing some gentle exercise. The way that I speak to myself, like that's... My headspace, really, really want to work on that being a much, much kinder. I want to work on that being like being so much kinder to myself. Um, and I want, I want a whole lot less pressure this year and just to really enjoy being home with Teddy because I, I find that I've really worked, I constantly feel criticised from people around me. Once you step into motherhood, people get this almost sickness where they feel that they have to share their opinion and tell you what you're doing wrong. I feel as if I'm always hearing people telling me how I'm not good enough and I'm doing things wrong which is then such a contrast to what I hear on my Instagram because then what I post on there, everyone's lovely and I those two just don't even, anyway. And again, with hearing so much criticism, I have really landed myself into this like pit of just self-doubt where I'll make a decision, but then I'll just doubt it like every single day. I'm just like, oh, I've done the right thing and it's so draining and I've felt paralyzed almost with some of these decisions i'm not stopping hgdc it will look different to how i started it obviously because not only am i a different person now but my business is different it like my following is different the things i do but when it when you simplify it all it comes down to i love granny squares i love crocheting and i want to make an income from it having said that my goals for this year are super super simple i am going to spend the year taking whatever steps possible to attain one thousand pound income a month um and i'm just going to caveat i feel i need to caveat all the time I was going to shy away from putting a figure because I feel like when you start putting figures in that it becomes almost an obsession and I don't want to get to the end of the year and be like oh I'm only earning £800 a month and feel that that's a bad thing when actually that's a super huge amount and really useful to us and our family. Um, it might not be a big amount to other people and that's fine this is about me and what I need to achieve what I want to achieve so yeah I may reword it and remove the thousand but the general gist of it is is I want reoccurring consistent income 
each month so that I can use that money to support the rest of my life. And the main goal for that money is for, as a family, we are focusing on paying down all of our finance payments. Um, we don't have a huge amount, but like a car, um, a couple of items around the home, things like that. We want to pay all of that down so that we can move away from living month to month and move back into living um, with emergency savings and all of that put by. Now, in previous years, I have really, 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 like I've gone in on the goals of like, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this, and this is how I'm gonna do it all. And that did work and it has served a purpose. But my time is so different now and my focus is more on me rather than, you know, it's just different now. So I've got a real simple plan for the year. So simple that, honestly, if I get to the end of the year and this has worked, then I'll be like, all those other years where I was doing this, 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 and this, like I was getting in my own way. Maybe this, maybe this simplified plan is truly what, what I've been missing. And I've shared this plan with you before. I have got it on my wall, my mum and means business printout and it's to release one collection per year to get a hundred reviews on that collection and then to run adverts on that collection so that I'm getting a sustainable two to four sales per day. It's that simple. Um, I'm not going to be trying to make, I'm not going to be focusing on more patterns, more, 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 new, new, new. I'm really focusing on my collection. So all of this year, I'm just gonna be talking about my collection that I made in 2023 and my collection I made in 20, I, that I am going to make in 2024. And um, my Instagram content, I be, I've been using Instagram as almost like a journal, which is good in some sense, because it's helping me and not so good in other ways. Um, but I'm gonna shift that slightly so that that is more of like an outreach instead. So that will be like a beacon and that will attract more granny square lovers to hgdc and then the more varied content will be here on youtube my plan for youtube is to put two videos out a month um last year i set that goal and then i just felt like it was so inadequate and i wanted to do a video every week and very very quickly burnt myself out with the amount of recording planning recording editing I just burnt out on it and then I barely showed up. Um, I actually have recorded a lot last year. And so I might start putting some of that vlog footage into these vlogs so that you can see it. Um, I've definitely been using video as like a diary as well, which has been useful. I find like you can just pick up the camera and speak um, and it ha it helps. It helps when you're hurting and also it's a way to be creative without having to have lots of equipment um two videos two videos a month that's it i'm gonna do a sit down one like this and it's gonna be really traditional of like here's my here's inside hdc so that's gonna be everything that i'm doing within hdc here's my whips here's my finished projects um my fo's and whatever else you know that very simple setup and then the second one i'm going to do like a roundup of granny square projects um i'm going to have a theme each month and then i'm going to do like a roundup so this month is going to be blankets and i'm going to do a roundup of blankets um yeah super simple just to consistently keep slow and steady progress and to also be okay with that um i don't want to create keep crashing and burning I don't want these huge lofty goals that are just so unattainable that I'm creating these huge expectations for myself and hurting myself so with having said all of that I've planned this year's collection and that's one of the things that honestly my heart was hurting and the thought of closing down HGDC I've already planned this year's collection and then the thought of it not materializing no, I, I want this for myself. Last year's theme, 2023, was um, I Heart Granny Squares. Like I just went straight in with that and I had um, five 
patterns. I had a blanket, I had a cushion. Ta-da! I had a um, blanket, cushion, bag, skirt and a jumper. And I'm truly proud of everything that I did with that collection. And I've learned so, so, so much. This year's collection is going to be Mama. Mama and me or Mama and Minnie. The basic premise is motherhood to a toddler um, and the items that will really serve me in my life right now. Um, I have quite a few design ideas. I'm not sure which ones will make the final collection. There's a couple of options. So my collection usually has the five patterns. Um, the collection is £25 and I always try and make it so that if you bought those patterns individually, you would obviously pay more than £25 so that you're getting a great saving by buying the collection. Um, I have in my mind some amazing, amazing, amazing ideas and I feel truly excited about them and I've missed that. Um, so I recognise that day to day, for me, the main things that I really need right now are warm items of clothing. <laughs> um, when I'm out and about with Teddy, I need mittens that I can cover up my fingers, but also I can get my fingers out to wipe his nose, pick things up, feed him snacks, you know, all those things. I need mittens. I also want a headband. As I said, I've been having issues with my ears and um, I want a nice cozy headband. I've already made a prototype. I'll put some pictures in. Um, I'm gonna make some changes, but I've already started on that one. I also want a jacket and this is gonna be like the main piece of the collection. And it's the item I'm starting on first. I want a jacket that is very like bomber jacket. I don't really like that word though, but it's like a, a utility jacket. I just think bomber has got such a negative connotation and I don't want that. Um, but I want it to be oversized. I want it to be double lined, just like the headband. So it will have a cozy lining and then the granny squares just to really help with that chill factor when you're out and about. Um, as I said, oversized, I want it to be quite loose fitting so you can get your bulky winter items under it. I really want to have um, like a big fluffy collar and I also would really really like to make a panel that I can zip into it so that when I am wearing Teddy when he's in his carrier he will then fit under this jacket and it will be snuggly um yeah that would be gorgeous and as I'm making it as a baby wearing jacket um it needs to be quite loose and almost long line so I can tuck his legs into it and they won't hang out. I want them to be nice and warm. I also want to, I'm playing with pockets so I'd like it to have pockets for my hands when I don't have the panel but when the panel is there I would like to have like a, a pouch almost because I do like to put my arms around him when I'm wearing him especially when he's asleep and then I wanted to figure out how to maintain the warmth on this bit um, for anyone that baby wears, you will know that once the baby's there, all of this area, sorry, all of this area needs to be clear or have something quite, you don't want like acres of material because that's a suffocation risk for your baby. Um, so I'm thinking of maybe making some sort of collar, something that I can just put on that would be like up to here and then have like a nice collar. Um, I'm also toying with the idea of a balaclava hood. I'm also, like there's loads of different, yeah, you get my drift, but the jacket, the jacket is like the main thing and it's been on my mind for quite a while now. I think originally I spoke to one of my friends, Lisa, about making a cover for Teddy's um, carrier last year when he was, like the first winter that he was born. And then I was like, oh, I'd quite like a jacket that matches. Um, and so that idea has just continued and now I, I have to, I really, really want to make it. Um, the other 
version of the jacket is I want to make a mini version so Teddy can have a matching jacket so when he's out and about he can be wearing the jacket and then once I pop him in the carrier I can just take it off him he he runs really warm so he will not need a jacket when he's in with me um yeah how cute would that be and I've actually started on that jacket so I'm gonna jump straight in um obviously we're talking with and we are within the inside HGD segment but most of my whips are HGDC so I got this snuggly yarn and this snuggly yarn is going to be the lining of his jacket and potentially his mittens. Matching mittens would be cute wouldn't it? I don't think, I was thinking not to make them convertible but he gets really really upset that he can't get his fingers out and I do think that I could convey to him that when it's cold he needs to cover up his fingers but it's okay to uncover them if he wants to like he likes to like pick leaves up and things and then he will need to cover them back up i think i could convey that to him and he would be on board with that so i got this snuggly yarn to um line his items i got it in a gray and I saw this yarn at B&M and I just decided to pick it up. It's very, very similar to the Flutterby Chunky that I've used previously. Um, yeah, nice yarn. This is my gauge swatch. And as I said, that's going to be the lining. And then the jacket itself is going to be granny squares, of course and for teddy's jacket i'm doing three round granny squares i think for my jacket i'm going to do like five or six rounds um i just i don't know like in my head i see the granny squares being quite big but i just love the three round granny square um but this will be the jacket so it will have the fluffy lining and then this I'm also debating whether to make it reversible. I would purposely make the seam visible and then that way you could just turn it and wear it whichever way. My only hesitation with that is not only have I got to grade this, that I've then got to figure out how to make it reversible. Like it's a lot, but something that I really want to do. So I don't know if he would wear it reversible. I think he would, you know, like if I've got him in a really heavily printed outfit and I feel like this is just too much, you could just have that and then see a bit of that on the inside. It also means like I could wear my jacket and he could wear his and we'd be matching, but he wouldn't be huge, you know? Yeah. Again, it's not a waterproof jacket or anything like that. Like if there's a huge downpour, we might not even be out in it and he has proper snowsuits for all of that. But this is more like um, crisp winter day and we're bundled up and this is like an outer layer. Especially if he has like a merino base layer for warmth and then a few lighter layers on top because that's generally what he will wear in the carrier. And then this, just for that extra snugs until he comes back in for his cuddles. This is the swatch granny square panel and that's the swatch for the cosy lining. I've made a load of granny squares. They are in the one of my yellow crates and I picked out a great big chunk of yarn and we went away over the Christmas break and I took so much yarn with me and I started making granny squares. Um, and I've started making a few more last night. So there are tons and tons of granny squares and whichever ones don't get used. I've used a 4.5 mil hook and that's my go-to size. So these can just be absorbed into a blanket. There's loads in there. Um, Oh, 
I have joined the swatch in black, but I'm also debating whether to join his in denim. I have a little bit of this in stash. I don't know if I'll have enough to do the whole thing. That's why I'm debating. I need to do um, one of my tasks after I've recorded this is to sit and start grading this so that I can really dive into it and start making it. And um, I will then be able to figure out if I've got enough of this yarn. I think I've got like 250 grams of it. And I'm just not convinced that that will be enough. I might make him one in black and then make another one in denim after. Yeah, so that's the first whip of the year that I'm working on. And is this is a big bag of yarn of the colours that I picked out for his granny squares. Um, for my version, I'm going to be using the Flutterby yarn which you can see here i'm going to be using the pink flutterby yarn and i um i've used it in a few projects so this is actually a slipper lining for my snugs pattern um i've used it to line toasty my hand warmer and i'm going to use that principle on the panel i believe for teddy's panel um So mine will be pink and I want to join it in glitter black. Obviously. I've started. Oh, I've got to sit up for this. I've also started on the mittens. Now my plan was to line the mittens in this and for the lining to sort of end here and then I'll have the bit that goes over. Originally when I started making it I was going to do the granny squares chunky but I've since decided to just do them at DK weights. So this is DK held double but I'm actually going to just do it DK held single um, but I want to create like a... I was of two minds to be honest do i do granny square on the back and palm of the hand and then have the top plain crochet or do i make the whole thing granny square this would be lined as well the finger pocket i don't know what to call it um oh and here is the yarn and the yarn band this is 100 grams of super soft polyester. Um, it's 175 meters, which is 192 yards, and it knits up to chunky patterns. Yeah. Um, so I've actually also dabbled with the mittens on that one. Um, As I said, uh, there will be five patterns in the collection. I don't know which ones will be in it. My other idea is that I could put the collection out and then if there are additional patterns, I could always put them together as a mini collection. So for example, I could do the head warmer, the, um, like the earband, the mittens, and the collar as a mini collection. Um, and then, like there's, uh, there's things available, but the main focus is to have one collection. So I don't need to do additional patterns. I'm not trying to put extra on myself. It's just that I have all these ideas. So we'll see how much I get done between now and August when I launch the collection. Um, the other difference is last year when it came to Black Friday and Advent, I I tried to do too much and I really did burn out and I've definitely learned from that and I was watching other businesses and how they handled those periods in their business and honestly it was just so eye-opening for me so I am going to approach this year completely different and 
I am going to Black Friday this year, I'm going to do a deal on my planners and a deal on my collection. And then for Advent, I'm going to release all of the patterns individually. Now, I didn't release the 2023 collection individually, so I'm going to do that throughout February. To, so February, March, April, May and June, there will be an individual release. Then nothing will come out in July and then August, the new collection will be launched. So I feel... calm i feel calm and i feel peaceful there's still plenty to get done but i actually feel like it's manageable whereas before i had these great big ideas but didn't necessarily have the time to execute it and i knew that so that just meant that i was either constantly feeling overwhelmed and behind or trying to do everything through the night and then surviving off no sleep and again as i said i didn't want to sleep so i wasn't HGDC wasn't to blame however I want it to be different this year so yeah um another project that I'm working on that is a whip is a bag one of the ideas for my mama collection is I want a bag that I can just chuck everything in so you know like when you're going from the house to the car and you just need to take all of the things I'd like a big bag for that um, the other idea was something that I could clip onto me whilst I'm wearing Teddy or just we're walking, going for a walk so that my hands are free. Um, so whether that be a backpack or a crossbody, again, like there's a few ideas and that one hasn't quite landed yet. But having said that, I did start a different bag last year and I want to get that finished this year. Now, I can't remember if I showed you any of it or not, so... We'll just pretend we didn't. I don't have a lot of this to show you, but safe to say that in here is another bag that I started working on last year and that I would like to see the light of day this year. I'm undecided whether I'm going to make that pattern in my, like, uh, under my own name or whether I'm gonna do it as a collaboration. I could potentially pitch this as an idea for a magazine for um i want to potentially pitch it as an idea for the crochet i can't remember what the box is called lottie and albert's um crochet box is it curate crochet um or it could potentially be one that i pitch to hobbycraft or a different yarn company that's a shoulder bag and again it's going to look beautiful but this year I really want to focus on things that are more practical and I want hands-free when I'm with Teddy. Talking of bags, I am working on a collaboration with Hobie Yarn and they kindly sent me this basket of, not the basket, but everything in the basket of goodies to design a bag pattern. The brief was like magical garden or something and then, so they sent me all of these items that I selected um the brief is i have to put it on the screen it's something along the lines of like magical garden spring floral like fanciful romantic whimsy um cute colors that type of thing so i've gone with this bag base which is something that i've wanted to work with i've seen them on etsy and other places but just never dove into it so it's a plywood base and this is the 25 by 4 times 12 by... What? I don't understand those dimensions. There was two sizes. I went with this one. Um, and you basically attach the yarn through the loops. Um, I've seen people generally use chunky yarn. Um, I decided to go with something a bit different. I've gone with these bamboo handles, so cute, imagine like cute summer dress, cute handmade crochet bag, like maybe you've got a crochet project in your Kindle, a little picnic blanket over your arm and you're going to go sit under a nice shaded tree, oh, oh. I got this yarn which is 
jute yarn it's 100 percent jute it looks i think it's four ply they are 50 gram like skeins um it calls for a five mil hook honestly it doesn't look dk it looks more like four ply so i will have to do a bit of a test with that the plan is to do the bag itself in the jute and then to make a strap using this crochet cotton and i went with this like really cute pink pack i want to make some granny squares with like a floral element to them and then that will be for the entire strap and then the i got these fittings for the strap so i went with gold and it's got the lobster class and the d-rings and whatnot in there um i've got the lobster locks which are 55 mil and then two of the d-rings and then i also got a magnetic clasp um so that i can close the bag i can see it in my head I just now need to start working on it. So a huge thank you to Hobie Yarn for sending that yarn to me. Um, they did send me some other yarn as well to review for free. And I posted about it and I was really excited. And then as I was working with it, I started to get like itching and red patches on my skin. And long story short, I'm allergic to it was causing some sort of skin irritation. So I got in touch with them and just said, look, I have a problem with the yarn. I can't continue with it. And they just said, um, please gift the yarn onto somebody who can make good use of it. So I've given it to a very dear friend who will probably make the blanket that I was planning on making or something similar. Um, so I'm really grateful they were so kind and understanding and I'm also just gutted that my skin did that. Um, Oh, this bag has split open. Let me show you. This is the jute yarn. I'm not really taking on any other um, collaborations. I don't want to overload my year. And I find working toward, with someone else's deadline that I always run the risk that if I'm unwell, Teddy is unwell. Like, I don't like the thought or feeling of letting anyone down. It's just a horrible space to be in. Um, so I purposely haven't been taking on any more collaborations. I want to leave the rest of my year free so I can really focus on the collection. And then I don't want anything towards the end of the year because I did find that I'd pushed so much to get the collection done and that was great. And then what I really needed was just to be able to stop, but I couldn't because I had um, other obligations. So I don't want to be in that position this time, this year. I'm gonna leave the end of the year clear. That feels, that, that thought feels nice. It's not to say if something doesn't come up that I won't take it on, but I am really, really being very considerate and intentional with whatever I put my name to at the moment. Um, and then that leads me to this, this beauty of a blanket. This is finished. This is my Starlight Blanket. It's the first collaboration that I did with Hobie Yarn. And they sent me, somebody on the team got in touch with me and asked if I would apply to be a designer and sent me a few of the briefs so I could sort of see what work that they request and like what would be expected of me. And honestly, when I received that, I was like, I can't even put into words. I, f I just, I was like, it was just a big moment. It was a huge moment because this has gone from a hobby and something I shared as a passion to something that is actually generating me an income. Now, Hobie Yarn send you out the yarn for free. They don't pay you to make the pattern. So you take that on knowing that that's got to come out of your own time. There'll be no financial um, payment for that. Having said that, what they do is whatever sales you get, 
um, is yours. So 100% of the sales minus the fees are yours, which in effect is like it being hosted on Etsy. I get 100% of the sales minus the fees and I don't get paid to make the pattern either. Now I know some designers feel that unpaid work isn't acceptable and I'm not here for that debate or to join in on that debate. I am merely explaining what the terms are and why I've chosen to go forward with it. The main reason I've chosen to go forward is because it gives me access to yarn that I possibly wouldn't have been able to buy myself. I can't really justify new yarn right now when this entire Calax is full of yarn. It also meant that I had new creative um, ideas flowing through my mind and also Hobie Yarn has a massive, massive audience and they are going to translate this pattern into two other, other languages. Um, I think it's, I have to check which ones. In my mind, I think it's like German and Finnish, but I need to double check that. And then they will market it on their page and on through their email. Um, so not only does that mean that I can reach a bigger audience and more people can find me, but hopefully those people will then come back to me and buy my existing patterns, my collection through my own website. Um, and I figured that was a really good way to have myself like to reach new people by doing something I love doing, which is making granny squares. Um, I found this blanket quite difficult in many ways because it wasn't my brief and it wasn't my idea. Um, so I've never worked in this way before, but I'm really, really happy to say that I've done it and proved to myself that I can do it. Also, I normally do my granny squares um, like this, where all of the different rounds are different. Um, but I started moving into making my granny squares. I don't know how to say like, is it mono monochromatic? They're not monochrome because they're not black and white. Like, you know, when you swipe on your phone, if you do monochrome, it's black and white. But I want to say monochromatic in that they're like singular solid colours. I actually started making this panel the year that Teddy was born. I started working on this design idea. Um, and those solid monochromatic granny squares, if I've got that word wrong, then I've made up a new meaning, okay? Um, those monochrom monochromatic granny squares have started giving me ideas. They've started designing themselves in my head, which is where Starlight came from, of having like the negative space within the granny squares. Um, and this blanket is all join as you go. So each block is join as you go. So what I do is I create um, the four granny squares within the heart. I do them join as you go. I add in the triangles to complete the shape. And then I add on the half half squares triangles to complete so because that was a half square i would do that one so it's a full square and then i would then go in with the two round squares and join them using join as you go so it does reduce the amount of ends having said that i always say my patterns always say weave them as you go I don't actually do that in practice because as a designer if you've woven in your ends and then you realize you want to change something it's near impossible so I do still have a good chunk on this one to do what I did is I prioritized all of the ends at the very bottom and all of the ends on the very outer edge so that when I held it up to do photos you'd be none the wiser I learned that when I did my first photo shoot um i had so many ends to weave in so it was i just pulled them all through to the back and did the ones that would like dangle and give me away i did them and i left the center and did them at a later date so i have a little bit more to do on the pattern um i've been in discussions with them usually i link to my granny square guide and it tells you exactly how to make the like granny squares and how to do join as you go however that would then need translating into the different languages. So I'm going to copy over the bits that are strictly required into the pattern so that the 
staff members can just translate the pattern. Um, I've also found it really, really, really difficult to use their standard format because I have put a lot into my branding and my patterns are heavily branded. And to then use a different font and like different colours like green. Oh, it really hurt me to do that. I'd love it if I'm going to see, maybe they'll let me change the colour of the font. So it's more HDDC. Also, you only need to put like six photos in, but I love, love, love having multiple photos. I just want to infuse as much as my of my brand into it as possible. And I want you to open the pattern and think, oh, like this designer is different in a good way, different. Um, so that they come looking for more. I don't want them to think, oh, I don't think much of this pattern and not want to have anything to do with me. Um, so yes, that's the Hobie blanket. Other bits within HGDC that I omitted to mention. I've added another income stream to HGDC, which is handmade by HGDC. And essentially I have been making my own patterns and selling the the physical, physical items. Um, there is a disclaimer in each of my patterns that you cannot make the physical item and sell it unless you buy a license to do so. So at the moment, I am the only person that can make my items and sell them. And I adore my blankets. I made and designed a lot of my baby blankets for Teddy. The, the two baby blankets I have, I designed for him. And I have had other people, friends, family members, and some people on the internet asking if I would make and sell them. And I've always said no. However, I actually realized that I was doing myself out of a little bit of income there because I like making the blankets so much that I will make them anyway. So why not just make them for the people that want them? Um, so this is going to be on a super exclusive limited availability because again, I have to do this around Teddy. I am having, um, I'm doing no more than at an absolute push, two blankets a month, um, as in taking two on. And in all honesty, I'm only going to take on one a month, but I will consider taking on a second but there will be a rush fee and all of those things to add in. And obviously, obviously depends on how the month is going. Like if I have a big Hobie um, deadline, then I'm not gonna take on another deadline. Learned that last year. Um, so I've actually just made a blanket, a cardigan and a dummy clip. And I recorded a segment, so I'm gonna include that for you to see. Hey team. I am just stealing 10 minutes to sit and show you this. Um, Teddy is downstairs with his auntie and my mother and I'm about to gift this, but I have to show you it before because it's too good not to. So, look at this, look at this, look at this. I have started doing Handmade by HGDC. Wait. so weird having somebody in the house while I do this. I started doing Handmade by HDDC and I have had this commission and I wanted to show you. I'm so excited. So, box. Look. Oh, I love it. I have done the cardigan with the name. I have done the dummy clip and I have done the blanket. Look. I can't wait to gift this. So the blanket is my arrival pattern and the alphabet pattern I will link below. And then the cardigan is the daisy pattern. Again, I'll link it below, but I've modified it. So I've changed the rib um, I changed the cuff and I have 
put the granny squares at the bottom and I've not put any on the back this time and I'm really, really, really stinking happy with it. So yeah, just wanted to quickly show you. I'm gonna take some photos now and then a little bit of video for Instagram and then I might, might record her reaction of my sister-in-law when she sees it. I don't know. But anyway, right now, Albie's kicking off. There's a lot going on and I'm starving. So let's get these photos done and then get it gifted. What do you think to the sticker? I love it. Eee! I'm so, so proud of it and so, so happy with how it turned out. And my box, oh my gosh. I'm going to order myself a box just so I have one to keep. I think it'd be really cute to be like, here's my next whip. Here's my next one. Um, and just for like photos and whatnot. So um, I made that for a little girl called Goldie Bloom. And then I actually have another blanket to make. However, I'm doing this one for free because it is for my own nephew. And um, my sister-in-law picked out the colors. Now, she said she wants it to be a surprise. I need to clarify with her whether I can share it on my social media, but keep it secret that it's for them or whether she doesn't want it sharing at all. So I need to find that out. So for now, I'm gonna go with the premise that I can share it. And if I can't, when I'm editing, I will sort this out. Um, but she's gone with these main colors, which are, and these are the Yarnsmith pegs. I should show you them. My testers, Keely, one of my main testers, and um, a load of my testy besties all put in a load of money and they bought me the yarn pegs. And they're normally so neat, but Teddy is just. Anyway, and it is the Yarnsmith Create DK range, and every single shade, all 120 of them, have been put onto a peg by a maker. Um, Eliza and the giraffe and this was sent to me as a gift and I absolutely love it um so it means that when you're creating or thinking of creating a project you can pick out the colors and I love this obviously my sister-in-law came over and picked out the colors she wants to work with wants me to work with so she's gone with these four We've got Latte, we've got Off-White, Sky Blue and Parchment. Oh, come on. How cute all of those. And then the joining colour is going to be Linen, which is like a very slight grage, like a bay grage. Um, Latte is a very warm, chocolatey colour obviously frothy milk has been added to that we've got off-white which is exactly as it says on the tin it looks like milk that would go in the latte parchment is a very um it's a very it's very beige but it's more on the brown shade can you see ever so slight difference between them it's got more of a warm brown undertone this one has more of like a yellowy gray undertone and then sky blue is a very baby blue she wants a tiny little bit of that interspersed throughout and then for the name she wants to use brown bear which i absolutely love because obviously teddy is a bear and i like this thought that his cousin's blanket is going to have a bear link in there and it's this really gorgeous brown colour. So if I hold them up, she's gone with these six colours. And the blanket pattern is my arrival pattern. And she's going for the solid granny squares on this one. So she's going to have the monochromatic. Each granny square will be one colour. And then it will be joined in the linen. And Yarnsmith, um, that brand is owned by Wool Warehouse and they reached out to me, the marketing team reached out to me on Instagram and said, can we send you an email about some yarn? And they very kindly sent me an email offering to send me some yarn for a new collection, that, like a new, 
a new collection of yarn that they've got coming out under the Yarnsmith brand and it looks gorgeous and I did reply to them and say it looks really really nice I'm just not entirely sure what I would use it on right now and I don't want to just order a random quantity and sort of just take whatever I can for the sake of it I, want, I really want to make something that's going to show the yarn in the best light and I don't want they said I didn't have to post about it or anything like that but she didn't feel right just taking it for the sake of it so I asked if I could have a bit more time to think about that and if there's any other way that I can help them with the launch they might they might want like I don't know they might just want to send some to me for me to just share on stories um or to do a giveaway or something I don't know I'm happy to do that to help out um but they said if I was interested in any of that other yarn to let them know how perfect is that timing so I sent them an email and asked if I could request the quantities of this yarn for the blanket, the cardigan and the little dummy clip. Um, I sent that off last night, which is Friday night. So I'm not expecting to hear back until well into next week. Um, but hopefully they will send out the yarn. And if they don't, I will purchase it anyway. So yeah, handmade by HDDC. And the other income stream is my planners. As I've already shown you, I have um, designed my own planners. I've got two at the moment. I've got my best year yet, which is like a year planner. And then I have my um, pattern planner, which is where you put your own patterns in. I'm actually going to order myself another one of those and I'm going to design all of my collection there. So you will see more of that. I also have these little mini jotters, which are um, hold that thought and these are perfect for just writing out a little to-do list or things that you need to remember and I have a couple of other items I'm thinking of designing yeah so again I'm just working on things that truly truly make me happy I think what time is it three o'clock that is everything that I wanted to share with you um I've really enjoyed sitting down and talking to you. I truly pray that in five years time when I look back on these vlogs that I have found some serious inner peace, that my health is restored, that I'm feeling strong, happy, healthy, that my child or my children are thriving within our home environment, that we truly have like a beautiful home environment that is our safe haven, and that we have that financial stability and all of that has to start somewhere and that's where we are now and I'm hoping that along the way that's going to inspire you and it's going to help me make friends that are working towards the same goals or have already attained them so yeah there's a lot of crochet vlogs out there you could watch and I know that my because my intersectionals are boy mama and um crochet business and granny squares they makes me niche but at the same time there's almost 5,000 of us here so thank you so so much for joining me and here's to 2024 I'll see you in the next video my next scheduled video is a roundup of um, Granny Square blankets and then I will see you in February, end of February for another sit down vlog and we can see how my whips are getting on, if I've got any more finished projects and yeah, I'll see you then. Until then, um, please comment below what your favourite project is of today's blog and also let me know if you have any plans whether it be crochet or life related maybe we've got similar ones and i'll speak to you next time